I'm Patrick Bailey with IQS.com. Today is July 25th, 2020. In this video, I'm going to be showing off my easy twist hand wheel I created for my sprinkler system. Okay, so here's the deal. We are doing our backyard this summer. So um, a lot of things we're doing with that. And sometimes I get a chance to make some kind of 3D print to help me out. And so we're redoing our sprinklers and adding more sprinklers. And so as a part of that, um, I added something to my sprinklers because I want to... Um, yeah. seal them up and blow them out and do different things. So a lot of times what I've been doing is I'm adding things like this to my sprinkler where I have a head like this that I can seal off. So I've got, uh, as an example, here's a cap that comes with it. And so I have that and then I can seal it. Um, and the reason I want this is I can open it up and do a couple of things. One, I can put, this is actually a hose attachment. So I can put the hose onto it and do some interesting tests. But also in the winter time, I have this little brass thing I put together and I can attach my compressor to it and blow my lines out. So that's one of the reasons I have this. But one thing I do not like about it is the size. So here we have this little tiny thing and um, it's just, there's no way, unless you're some muscle gorilla, you can't tighten this by hand. Uh, it does have uh, a pattern around it, a hex pattern, so you can use a, a crescent wrench and close it, but I'd just rather do it by hand. So, um, you know, in theory, I could print something to match these threads, but I don't think a printable thing is going to be nearly as good at sealing as this can. So my idea was, hey, let me encase this in something. So I've had a couple of designs, and let me see if I can open one. Ah, here we go. So here is the rough design, which I'll show a little bit better in uh, real I'll show a little bit better a little bit later on in this video. But the idea is here is there's a hex in there and I can put this in. So I put this in and again, I'll have to show this later because it's hard to show uh, when I do a solo, solo video. But the idea is I can put it in there, kind of press it in, and then this, then I have a tool to actually, come on. Then I have something I can wrap around it and I can uh, use this for my hand tool. Ah, there we go. So now I've got that encased in there, but also it's got a lip on the other side so it can hold it in. And then just so this doesn't wiggle off because this could easily pull off, I have a cap that goes on it and the cap just rests against here. And the only reason it's there, you don't have to do it tight. The only reason it's there is so that this doesn't come off. And then boom, now I have my little hand crank. So that's, that's the design, and I put that out there. You can download it, and here's a link you can go see and download it from uh, Prusa Printers. And I also made, uh, so that, there's that one. There's also one that's a, I made that's a reverse, because I have two different kind of outlets. There's one like that one. I also have one like this, where it goes inside. Oops. I have that in a couple of drains. So that one's, I think, this is a 29 millimeter. Now this one's a little bit more interesting, because it's a similar idea. I stick it in. But because of the nature of this, it's lower. So what I did is I made these threads around here and then I have a different cap that has innards in it. And so then that presses against it. So I got both of them set up now. So now I can put that on my sprinklers. And if anyone's interested, um, let me see. I have some Home Depot links. So here's a cap that I use. Although this cap does not look like my cap. The cap I bought, you know, has the hex pad around it that you can get a crescent wrench around. And then this is, doesn't look exactly what I bought, but apparently it is the code for it. So that is, oh, where is that? that is, you can see this looks vastly different. Even though I clicked on the three quarter, this goes down to a three quarter. So that's the one I bought. And here's the brass fitting I bought to go to a hose. And then here's the other cap. And there's the one which looks completely wrong. Here's the one where it goes down to a three quarter for my other cap. So I'll put links in the show notes, but you know, watch out when you go buy these things because these should fit on these one inch going down to three quarter inch is what I have. Um, anyway, but with that, uh, next let me go over the numbers. So the numbers are, and to, to print this out, it took three hours and two minutes. It took 2.2 central electricity and it weighs 0 0.034 kilograms and at 20 dollars per kilograms comes up to 68 cents to worth of material. So in total to print one of these guys, uh, cost me 71 cents. And I didn't time the other one because there's two versions. There's this version and the other version. I didn't time the other one, but it should be pretty similar. But I did post both of them. Um, so really interesting. It's going to solve my problem, I think. 
Um, but then with that, let me um, do two things. One, let me show you how I designed it in Fusion 360 because you may have to do your own. This only applies to this particular model at this particular time. And what happens if you want a one inch or one and a half inch? You're gonna have to, I'm not, I can't design every single one. So I have mine that works on mine for this three quarter inch, but you may have a different need. And so I can show you real quickly how I designed that. And then after that, let me go show you an app. Let me go show it in action. Okay, let's go over Fusion 360 design. So first, I think it's always a good idea. I've got my little book here where I document things. It's a good idea to kind of sketch some things out, get some rough measurements, and kind of figure out what you think you need to test it. And also, iterate, iterate, iterate. Like, I went through eight iterations to get this working. And some of those first iterations, like, I didn't bother putting, you know, the knobs on the end. I just wanted to figure out, first I was getting, making sure that it would fit. So I do a really thin one. And so, you know, make sure you iterate. See, make sure it saves you time, saves you material. But with that, let's go look at Fusion 360. So, um, one thing I always have to emphasize on Fusion 360 is to, I, I hate it when people post things online in proofs of printers or Thingiverse and they don't have it aligned correctly. Always make sure to align it correctly. And one way to make sure your life is easier in Fusion 360 is to treat this plane that you see before you as the plane of your printer. And if you, the defaults need to be changed in Fusion 360 in order to make that happen. So you can go up here to your name, click on preferences like I just did, go to general, and then here where it says default modeling orientation, change it to Z up, Z up, and hit apply, okay. And you may have to restart Fusion 360, but then you're good to go. Now, I already have it done over here, so I'm gonna try to go back and forth and repeat what I did before as best I can. So here, I'll right click here and say new component, and I'll say uh, uh, for video, for video, I'll call it one. So I always get to make a new component, just makes things easier. Click on the origin. The first thing I want to do is create a sketch. And I'll click on the top here, hit my S button to bring up my short keys. And then we'll start with a, uh, a hex. So here's an inscribed pattern, let's see, circumscribed. I click that and I'll have it come out here. And here's where you have to fiddle with the numbers. So I'm not going to do it exactly correct. I had to go fiddle back and forth. But for right now, I think in my notes, it was like 31.5 or something. Anyway, you can fix this to whatever you want. Put that number in, hit tab. And here you can see this is six sided, but mine is eight sided. So I got to change that to eight and boom. Let's assume that's correct. It's probably not, but just for just to show you to do it. So there's that. And then I needed to make a lip. I did do a little bit of measurement there. So I'll just make one a little bit bigger and I'll say, uh, oh wait, that's, oh, that's wrong because that should have been the diameter, not the radius. So I can come in here and change it or I can just say, let me just go control Z and undo that. So let me try this again. So now one thing you can really do in Fusion 360 is you can do math. So I can say, hey, I want the 31.5 diameter, but I'm doing a radius right now. So let me divide that by two. Kind of cool. Uh, and then we'll change that to eight again. Boom, now we're looking good. So here I'll make this and I'll say, we'll say uh, 43 for argument's sake. So there's 43 and then we'll come out here and I'll make a bigger one. And now here's where we get interesting. So I'll say, say 95 and then I'll, I'll make, I need to make, to make my knobs, I gotta do some interesting stuff. So I'll say 95, 90, and 85, I think will work for this purposes. But these, I don't wanna be solid right now, so I'll click on them and make them a construction line and a construction line. And that way you can use them, but they don't get in the way. And But now what I wanna do is I wanna do a little curvy thing. So what I can do is I need to make some guidelines. So what I can do in my mind is I want to um, have 10 knobs. So 10 knobs, 360 degrees, every knob should be um, 36 degrees. So we're gonna use a little bit of math here and start, I'll hit L for line, click that, come out here. I don't care about the length, so I'll hit tab and I'll say 36 degrees and boom, there's that one. And then I need one that should be about half that. Come out here, hit tab and say 36 divided by two, boom. And then I need half of that. So let's see, uh, I'll do it again and say, oh, say 36 divided by four. And I believe I need the other side too. Let me see. So I'll come down here 
and hit, um, it looks like it's going negative already. So I'll say 36 divided by four. I think I'm actually making too many lines, so, but I'll make, but they're all just gonna be guidelines. Uh, 36 divided by two. I think that's more than enough, more than enough to give me what I want. I'll turn them all into construction lines. That way they don't get in my way. And let's see. Oh, also I probably need one at the zero. I think I can get away without it, but I'll make one anyway. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll come down here and make those arcs. So I'll come down here, hit my S key, and I'll get a three point arc. And so I'll come here, click there, boom, there's the first one. And then, oh, I need one over here. I missed one up, I need another line. See, I made too many lines one way and not enough the other. So I'll say, 36 divided by four times three. So you can just do the math and don't have to think about it, which is kind of nice. Then I'll come down here and say, okay, we'll do that, that, and that. Now you can see these are gonna be really shallow knobs compared to what I did here. And to make them bigger, I just have to separate those lines out. So I did like 95, 90, and 85. To do it right, the way I did it was probably more like 95, 90, and 80, or, or 75, or something. So I just want to, I'd have to make these bigger if I wanted to make them more pronounced like I actually have. But this gets the idea across. So now what I'll do, hit S, oh, not that, whatever I hit. I'm not sure what I hit. Hit my S key, and what I'm going to do is a circular pattern. Now these are my shortcuts. If you don't have circular pattern up here, you can search for circular pattern and just choose it. But I always keep my mind on my shortcuts because I use a lot. So I'll come down here and I'll say, oh, oh, I'm out of my, I'm out of my sketch. Oh, no, nope, I'm not. I am. Never mind. Make sure I'm sketch. Circular pattern. And I select my object. So I'll select that one and that one. I'll select my center point, which is my center. And then right now you can see it's, it's got three, ob three of them, but I want 10. So I'll do 10, and now because we did the math, they exactly line up perfectly. Um, and with that, you know, maybe I can, I can change things in the fly and it might adjust. So let me go click on that guy, hit D. Oh, there we go. Wherever you went. Fin let me just finish the sketch. Let me go, come on, come on. And the sketch again. Okay, there is the 90, there is the 85, uh, and let's see if I can change them. You can change them to the fly, hopefully it adjusts, so I'll just say 70. And now it adjusts everybody, but then this guy needs to be probably 85, and there we go. Okay, so a little extreme on that one. So let me change this one to 75, maybe. There we go. So that's kind of close to what I did. So now I'll uh, we'll finish this sketch. And then what I can do is I can take this and do Q for press pull and say, I think I did eight millimeters or 10, I forget now. And then it always makes the sketch go away. But I need to bring it back and I can click on this inner one, which is my little blocker. If it'll let me do Q for press pull and do just one millimeter is what I did. And there's the basics of it. But now also I got that thread on the outside on the top. So I can click on this and create a sketch on this guy and then hit S and do S, do a circle and come out here to, well, this is, this is not exactly what I did, but I'll just say 60. I'll say 60, hit S again, and then make another one and we'll make it thinner. So I'll say 55 as an example. And then we'll hit Q, press pull. And I'll choose that and go up 10 as an example. Hit S again in my 3D mode. And here's this thread tool. Hit that and then go to model because it need to be actually modeled. And then you can choose how much you want. I think I did a three spin. So I'll say MX3 in this example, hit okay. And there's my thread. And then I come here and these threads are always a little too tight. So I hit Q for press pull tool. In this case, I usually go back 0.2, but in this case, it's so big that I actually went in 
negative 0.3. Boom. And so there's that. There's that guy. And then I would have to make the top. And to the top, I'll say new component. And I'll hide this one. And we'll say original sketch. Create a sketch plane. Hit S. Do the circle. And I'll do 60 because the, the outer, right? Yes. And then S again. This one I'll make it uh, bigger. Make it 65. And then what I can do is I can take this, do oh, finish sketch, do Q for press pull, and we'll go up 10 as an example. And I gotta bring back the sketch, hit that, hit the bottom one here, hit Q, press pull, and go up, you know, four or something like that. And there's my cap. But then I need to do a thread here. And that thread should be the 60 modeled and make sure it matches, make it an M3 in this case, in this example, and that's not what I really did for mine. And then hit Q for press pull and take it back 0.3, negative 0.3, negative point three. And this looks a little thin, so I might go back here and edit that pull and make it, you know, 15 or something. There you go. And that's the basic idea. And I'd print that out. And then from here, what you can do is you can right click on here and say, save it, save this as a STL, which will save that one object, hit okay and save it. And then I can go back to this other object, right click it, save STL and save it as an object. So that's what you can do because mine only works for one, but if you're doing something different, you might have to follow this kind of procedure to make it exactly for years. So there's that. And then with that, let me go show you how it actually works in the real world. Okay. So here it is show it in detail all together. So here's the idea that I can put this in here, press it down, and so now I got my lever, but technically this can pop off. So I have this that just hold all this does is hold this in place. So this doesn't have to be really just firm against it but not tight. Of course, I put my logo on it, so I could be cool like that. So now it's firm, so now it's not going to pop off. And now I can hand tighten it. Which you have to get it pretty tight, so otherwise, you know. If you're doing stuff like this, there's like, you know, thread tape on there too to make sure it's not going to leak. But at least now, I got to get it really pretty tight. But if I open up my valves, I shouldn't get it leaking out. So, all right, so solve my problem. Doing this backyard work, it's a lot of fun, but it's also just a lot of work. I'll try to get out some videos out over the next few months, but sometimes you gotta get the grown up stuff done first before you can fit around and play.